Well, the argument could be made that the season finale or season four finale of Ruthless could have been the series finale. And honestly, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, I think back to like the days of, you know, Disney Channel and whatnot, that after they met a certain quota of episodes or seasons like, you know, uh, Live and Mad Maddie or yeah, wait, that was a show. During, yeah, I was in college at the time, so I don't have nostalgia for that. Like, let's say a. Uh, Hannah Montana or something but I do know that uh, one of the actors on one of those shows was on a podcast and he talked about how you know in order to um lessen the amount of money they would pay actors after hitting syndication or something like that or even the writers I believe they would rebrand a show like um what was it um Hannah Montana forever live in Cali live in Maddie Cali style. Like basically I think the rebranding meant like, Oh, well, because we reached like three seasons or a hundred episodes, we can rebrand it that way. Instead of increasing the pay of the actors, once we get to a new season, it will actually kind of cap at a certain level since technically it's a new show, but with the same characters. So when it comes to ruthless, um, I wonder what a rebrand of the show would look like. Let's say if there were spinoffs or something like that. But to me, I don't think that is completely necessary to do spinoffs of this show. I mean, you have everybody or darn near everybody leaving the compound. Um, you know, of course, a large group of the males. And then, of course, the females, they left in an attempt to get the highest back. But I think Elder Mother is in her trailer drunk. <laughs> But, um, Ruth, she got in a newspaper car and left. Um, she told Laura to leave while she was waiting for her husband. But then you have, of course, the other main characters, River, Joan, Lacey, and Zane. They left too. So an argument could be made. Future adventures could be told like Ruth trying to find her daughter. Um, then, you know, the other characters, maybe, Lacey will try to uh, try to find Paula at some point. There's just so many things that, you know, we want to know what's going to happen next. But my argument could be, well, should those adventures happen in a separate series or should everything kind of fold back into the oval, considering this was the spinoff of the oval? Some people who say spinoffs, I mean, having a spinoff create further spinoffs isn't an impossibility. I mean, because I think I made this uh, point in a post I did about sisters, but Moesha has an expansive universe where you have the Parkers, Girlfriends, and the game. But the example I want to use here is that Girlfriends was a spinoff of Moesha, but then the game was a spinoff from Girlfriends or I don't know. Is spin off the right word? I know that the backdoor pilot episode for the game happened during an episode of Girlfriends because Melanie, I think, was cousin a cousin of Joan. So basically, I don't know. It is possible, but I think for me, it would have to be done right. You know, I think that if we were to have a situation where Ruthless continued, then just get rid of the Oval Connection. It just makes things super confusing when it doesn't need to be but i do think spinoff material could work if done right i mean seeing the escapees kind of reacclimate to the real world i don't know if that's actually too much of a hassle for them because they've been i guess you could say their eyes have been open to the deception of the compound for a while so it's just a matter of okay how can they get back into society Unlike the blind sheep who, you know, didn't know what to do about the highest, but, you know, uh, would their plan succeed? And remember, there are allegedly Rakadusha members everywhere. So just because the compound f uh, fell apart, that does not mean the Rakadushi quote unquote, sleeper agents out there are, you know, um, no longer drunk off the Kool-Aid because it's an operation bigger than the Raku. It's all about money and whatnot. So I really do feel like at the end of the day, um, these people are going to be on the run and it'll be interesting to see if they made it to their own promised land, which is outside of the compound. Uh, will there be further betrayals? Like, would they really split the money the way they say they will split the money? 
Um, that would be interesting. So, yeah, the spinoff materials there, not to mention, you know, the highest, if he does make it out of his uh, situation alive, would he try to hunt down Ruthless and the, uh, I mean, not Ruthless, Roof and the others. But I don't know. I, I do feel like just because the highest is in a certain situation and everybody's trying to get him back, that doesn't mean the story's over. And I, I agree. I mean, it's like if people say this was way better than the um, Oval season finale in terms of the way the story was moving as great as this episode was it, it does suck that it took this long to get things moving like i made the comparison around the time i stopped reviewing the show this was like gilligan's island it's like okay they're never going to get off the island but then they finally did the uh movie where they escaped but then at the end of it they winded up back on the island but then from there, they actually had a series where they turned the island into like a hotel resort. So they weren't technically trapped there. All right. But in any case, um, do I think this should have been the series finale? Yeah, maybe. I mean, if there, uh, we do know there is a fifth season. So things could wrap up, but I don't know. I don't know. it. I mean, the popularity of this finale alone and the numbers kind of warrant further, you know, storytelling. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, should it, should this have been the series finale? Do you think spinoffs could be birthed from this episode? And Or do you think the story should just wrap up in the oval? Let me know your thoughts and I'll catch you in the next video.